Greetings, everybody. It's Jim. I hope you had a great holiday season so far. I've had a great Christmas. I got to see my family back in Erie, Pennsylvania. Funny enough, I live in Washington State right next to the border, and you would have thought that it would be snow in Erie, Pennsylvania during the holiday season. If you see my video on the War of 1812, the link will be down below. It can talk about how much snow we normally get. And it's funny because I'll come back here to Washington State, and there's a plethora of it, and everybody snowed in. Go figure. But anyway, one of the things that I got from my brother for uh, Christmas was a nice little surprise um, you know because I am a fan of Blood Bowl from Games Workshop I love the game I love football it's a great sports game it has a nice little uh, roster thing where you can actually manage your own team uh, put players in players out uh, you see them grow and uh, on, it's Blood Bowl so you also see them die <laughs> So it's a pretty interesting. So, but he gave me a simplified version of Blood Bowl that's come out that I was curious about, but didn't want to jump into. But I'm glad he did. It was a great gift because now I'm all about it. So let me give you all the reasons in the world of why you should be playing Blood Bowl from Games Workshop. So let's start with the first thing first, because one of the things that people say when they like and subscribe to my videos, and I hope you do too, is I get to the big part first and then drill down. I get to the important stuff, unlike some of those recipe websites where you want to get the an Italian meat sauce recipe and you got to go through this chick's uh, big life story before you even get to the recipe, right? <laughs> You know, I don't want to do that. So let's just say this. Yes, you should get Blitz Bowl. Absolutely. Even if you're a Blood Bowl fan and if you're on the fence, even if you're on the fence by the end of this video, I think you should stop this video. And this is for everybody, everybody watching right now. now if you have a reason to get this game, stop what you're doing. Pause the video. Go down to Barnes & Noble and get Season 1. See, the thing is, um, this is what I got for my brother, actually, from Christmas because Season 2 just came out. And it's like 70 bucks. At Barnes & Noble, it's only 35 bucks, And there's a reason you should get this. I am going to be going over the differences between season one, season two later in this video. Uh, but the thing is, just trust me, get it. You're not losing anything. The rules are a little bit different, but that's online and you can download the rules anyway. Uh, there are, uh, like, I'll get into it. I'll get into it. But just trust me, get there because I don't think there's many left. You'll be lucky if you find it. It's 35 bucks. Go grab it. Now, the thing is about Blood Bowl is a great game, but it's three hours long. And if you really want to get a league, and that's half the fun of it, is trying to get a league and see who wins the big trophy at the end. And that's harder and harder to do as games take three hours to do. Isn't there some way that they can condense the game? Now, they already tried this, actually. Uh, they have something, and it's very popular, called Blood Bowl 7s. And what they did is they took uh, the field, which is normally 26 by 15, as you can see here, and they changed it to 20 by 11. And they instead of 11 people on the field at one time, the reason they call it sevens is because there's only seven people on the field at one time. Well, Blitz Bowl goes even one further because I think normal uh, sevens game is about an hour and a half maybe. Well, Blitz Bowl goes even one further and they make the pitch 15 by 11, which it really congests the action. And yet, even though they've knocked down uh, like uh, five squares, they only knocked one player off the field. So there's still six players on the field at any one time in a blitz bowl game now in blitz bowl everybody is guaranteed three actions a turn now that's a big difference than in blood bowl where you're guaranteed one action and if you screw up that action you are done for the turn you could have 11 guys on the field all these plans all the things they can do as soon as you drop the ball you get uh knocked down instead of your opponent or you fumble the ball whatever your turn is over and that's what leads to a lot of heartbreak right um but that's part of the fun of the game but it's also another reason why the game takes a long time because you're constantly uh moving things and it what if you're not screwing up, you've got 11 guys to move, and that takes a while. Here, it just says, I go three actions, you go three actions. You could do the same action. Uh, you could take more than one action with the same player if you want to. There are exceptions, uh, like if you fail a block or something like that, uh, then they're not eligible to move anymore. But you could take all the actions with one guy, or you could take three actions with three different guys. Uh, so, But it keeps the game moving pretty quickly from turn to turn. Now, one of my instincts was to ask, is this Dungeon Bowl? Is this the new version? But the thing is, they've already came out with Dungeon Bowl that's still available uh, to buy, as a matter of fact, just in recent years. And it's a completely different game than Blitz Bowl. Um, you know, because basically Dungeon Bowl is uh, little rooms with all kinds of, uh, you know, wonky things to it, walls and such. And then uh, two square wide corridors going to the next room, and it's an actual dungeon. And you're bouncing between... Uh, teleportation markers taking you all over to different places of the dungeon. It's really quite chaotic and its own different game altogether. 
So other than the field of play being shorter and the number of players on the field at one time being fewer, uh, there are still some differences between Blitz Bowl and Blood Bowl proper, okay? Because Blood Bowl 7s by itself, well, that would probably be good enough, right? So Blitz Bowl's got to be its own game. Now, what do I mean by that? Well, that's because gold, Blood Bowl's still the gold standard. It is the the big leagues, as they say. And the and the minors are Blitz Bowl, um, Blood Bowl 7s and Blitz Bowl. Blitz Bowl is its own thing because it's actually a gladiatorial, gladiatorial kind of uh, viewpoint. Otherwise, the crowd's going to decide who wins and who loses, okay? And they can be pretty fickle. Yes, scoring a touchdown gives you three points, but there's other ways to score. And if you don't take advantage of them, you could score all the touchdowns you want, but your opponent may still claim the victory, okay? Now, this is where aficionados of, the, of Blood Bowl might say, yeah, that's not Blood Bowl anymore. That's something different because it is a seesaw game. It's what you've seen in mechanic in other games where okay you score three points but at least i can score two right and it's still you're st you're both doing actions but it's the one who does the most and gets the, just a little bit ahead it makes it feel like the person who's losing is not losing so bad right um but this is actually quite interesting um so let me explain and you can make your own decision if it's for you or not so at the beginning of the game three challenge cards are drawn and pla placed out on the field nobody can claim it on the first turn but they are eligible as soon as the second turn starts um, um, they, something as simple as this, showboating for the crowd. Claim that card if you score a touchdown. Simple enough, you get an extra point. Now, you got to take the card, not just move the, the marker up one point, is because on the back of the card, there's some special abilities. It could be anywhere from re-rolling a failed pass to uh, sprinting an extra two squares. Okay, and let's take a few a look at a few more. Uh, just getting the ball could be a point. You know, and they go up and down depending on this, you know, how difficult the task may be, like breaking some bones. You get two cards if you in injure an opponent that turn, okay? So there's all different ways to get points other than scoring the touchdown. Mind you, a touchdown is still the creme de la creme with three points, but there you can get some extra points even if you couldn't score that turn. And just as a reminder, folks, if you've come this far in the video, there's a good chance you've liked the video. I hope so, anyway. Please take a moment to smash that like and subscribe button and just let me know I'm doing a good job. I do appreciate it. Now, the game ends when one player gets 10 points more than the opponent. Now, remember, this is a seesaw game. I mean, I'm gaining three, you're gaining two. There's always a reason to score, and you're only getting a little bit more ahead maybe than the other guy each turn. So if you're ahead by 10, you pretty much won the game. Uh, generally, you will go through all 24 challenge cards, and maybe not go through all of them, because the idea is the game ends when all of the challenge cards are out of the deck and onto the field, whether you possess them or not. So everybody gets one more turn uh, when the last card is played on the field. Um, so now, there is an option that you can have these endgame challenge cards that they give you. I think there's about 16 of those cards, and you shuffle them up, and you take six of them, and you put them on the bottom of the deck. And what it basically is, it's like a, a game show lightning round, where the points values are doubled. Um, they're usually worth two to three points each, and have some really good powers. Um, but they, they will make the, turn, the game last six turns longer. But it's a nice again, a nice little uh, chance for somebody to catch up. Uh, you know, give them or somebody to totally blow their opponent away by the end. So uh, that's how the game ends in Blitz Bowl. So let's go over the differences between Blitz Bowl Season 1 and Blitz Bowl Season 2. Most of it's cosmetic. I'm telling you, you should go out and get Blitz Bowl Season 1. Uh, not just because it's $35. Bucks, uh, it's practically the same game. And sooner or later, if you get into it, and get, you'll want to get Season 2 anyway. But So why should you get Season 1? Well, it's because of the pitch itself. Okay, The board. Um, it's got two different configurations to it for the statues and where they're at. Uh, the statues block your movement and they make a pass they interfere with the pass they don't block it but they'll interfere with it uh, making it a negative one the thing is in season two they give you a different uh, configuration of those so actually by getting season one now you'll be able to get that pitch now they might sell the pitch separately later i guarantee you it's going to cost a little bit plus you're going to get the figures uh, you're going to get humans and orcs now with season two uh, you'll get humans and dwarves so the thing is you'll get an extra new two extra pitches and you'll get the dwarves when you're ready to get season two okay and by and by the time you're ready maybe they'll already have season three out there um but the biggest thing about season two um there's two there's two things about it one there's a rules change which doesn't matter because you can download the rules and that is 
anytime that somebody does not take a challenge card at the end of their turn, uh, a new ball pops out uh, from the from the into the field because that's how it is in regular blood bowl. Somebody starts with possession in uh, in uh, blitz bowl. Uh, ball gets popped out of the trap door and of course anybody on the trap door at the time automatically gets injured uh, but there could be multiple balls on the field at any one time trying to make it so more ways to score uh, so it makes it for some interesting gameplay there but the other thing is um, and this is the only thing they add well, they actually add two things, but one of them is, would be more important than the other, is they add specialized ball rules for every team. Now, I already seen on the Sprues that each, in, Blitz, in the Season 1 that each team has its own ball. Okay, there's a set, there's a special ball for each team, and they kind of knew that already. They gave the spike ball to the humans, and uh, the orcs have a special uh, ball that uh, does something different. Uh, but every team has a special ball, and they have cards in season two where okay, you have a ball deck, okay, and it has like six normal balls and then you have your team and they put theirs in there the goblins actually have three cards with three different balls but basically you shuffle them up and every time a ball is supposed to come out of the dugout you flip a card over and it's that ball okay so that's all, all there really is and the difference between season one and season two season two does have cards for each team now the funny thing is you would think that the team box set would have the team ball and the the team roster cards you know you would think that would come with it but well and the thing is all the, the thing is with season two it's not important for season one i mean you know you're trying to see if you like the game or not in the first place uh those balls don't mean that much and you've got them already with you don't you do get the balls the physical balls in season one okay so you just don't even need those you just need the rules to see if they come in and then you could roll a die to see if it comes in there's all kinds of ways to circumvent using the cards themselves uh so it's not that big of a deal now one of the things that blitz bowl actually has potential to be better than actual blood bowl is the way they handle the roster and um you know leagues okay um the, the thing is about blood bowl one of the the best things about Blood Bowl is the fact that you are tracking all your players and they're gaining stats, they're gaining abilities, they're gaining injuries, and you got to track those too. It's part of what makes the, sto the story of your team special. All kinds of random stuff is happening. The problem I have with it is because I like seeing a figure, and this is true on all miniature games. If I see a, a miniature, I want to know its stats in my mind, you know, if I know the game well enough. You know, I don't want to constantly have to ask, hey, is that catcher the one with the re-rollers, that black work blocker, the one that has the mighty blow? Uh, you're constantly asking in the league game with Blood Bowl, you're constantly asking these questions because by the time you play this guy again, unless you're playing with your your best friend like me and my buddy Keith would actually play eight play eight teams <laughs> we went back and forth with all the teams and stuff but even then we'd have to ask um but if definitely when you don't play again you're in a league and you don't know the opponent and you don't play them again for like eight games or something like that something totally different has happened to their team right so it's one of the things that make the games go uh, a lot longer in blood bowl so they can't do that in blitz bowl so what do they do um basically they give the coaches traits and what they do um is they say after every game in a league win or lose uh one of my caveats I'm not a real fan of it, is you roll the dice and you get a trait. So, for instance, Loud Celebrator, right here is an example, score four points for a touchdown. Now, that's going to happen for the, every every game in the league. You're going to gain a new trait. Now, if you roll one you already had, you've lost it. So there's, of course, that Games Workshop random wonkiness that they like to throw in there that drives all the competitive people nuts. <laughs> but anyway, uh, but you gain a lot. But here's the biggest thing. At the end of the league, it all gets wiped. So there is no growth there technically. Uh, and the reason is you can only, you know, you're only, you can only gain so many traits before you have all of them. And then it's crazy. Um, so it's a little bit overpowered and actually kind of cheap in my opinion. Um, but the thing is, uh, what I think they should do uh, is actually do it by the number of extra people specialists on the field so in other words now mind you there is a caveat to this too um basically in your box you will get six players you get three linemen and three specialists here we got the humans uh and they got a thrower a blitzer and a catcher right well in the game you get injured quite a bit and you all what happens is you go into the dugout and unlike Bl blood bowl where you have to wait for the touchdown to be scored and then you can come back uh in this one you can come back next turn they basically uh you take one of your three actions and you place them 
on your uh, side of the board in, on, in your end zone, and then they can play again. Okay, so it kind of slows you down a little bit, especially in a game where, you know, you only got three actions and every turn you can grab one of those challenge cards or score a touchdown. Uh, so it definitely slows you down. But my idea is that uh, with your roster, it tells you how many of any one iteration of any one of your specialists that you can have. So otherwise, I can have three throwers get injured before I run out of throwers. And then I just if I if I'm out of those and I'm out of all my specialists, then I can only play with linemen for the rest of the game. Okay, now mind you, this means you you probably have to have three extra linemen figures to buy in my version of it. But I think it would work. Now, league play is something that I feel probably needs improvement. Maybe I'm a traditionalist and I just like a win-loss record to take you to the playoffs. But uh, you go through this with me and see what you think. See, the thing is you get league points after every game in, you know, when you're against everybody else. So how do you score league points? Well, the first thing is simple. You get three points if you win the game, one point if you tie, and nothing if you lose. I can live with that. Sounds simple enough. Now let's get to the wonky part. Challenge cards that you claim during the game, each card you claim, no matter how many points they're worth, uh, give you a league point. So as we can see by the example here, this guy got 12 league points uh, by collecting 12 challenge cards. That's four times as much as just winning the game. That's a little wonky. And of course, they got injuries that give you a point as well um, for each one. And I guess that they're just experimenting with that. Uh, another way to make it so somebody could actually win without winning any games. I wonder how many people could actually lose all the games, yet get all the challenge cards and win. I get it. It's games Workshop wonkiness. May, again, maybe I'm a traditionalist, but I kind of want that to stay a win-loss record thing. Now, one thing I said I wanted to experiment with is playing Blitz Bowl straight, and that is without challenge cards and just making every touchdown just one like regular Blood Bowl and see how that works. And I mean, basically seeing if there's a way to play Blood Bowl sixes instead of sevens, basically, only with Blitz Bowl rules, you know. Uh, if you've done that, leave, leave a comment down below. And so uh, basically, uh, this also comes into the, my mind is, um, you know, why they didn't make just a Blitz Bowl pitch without the statues on it in the first place. Uh, I'm don't be surprised if they don't come out with that you know just a blitz bowl pitch and then they give you miniatures to buy to come out and uh, you know different sizes so you can put them where you want to little trap stores to put them where you want to but i think that might be a bit much actually i would just like i would like a blank field though um, you know, because I mean, really with the four pitches that are already out there right now between season one and season two, there's enough configurations. I wouldn't want anything weird or different than that. Now, of course, being a games workshop game, this does mean you're going to have to spend some time painting figures. And I know there's a lot of jokes out there about people to paint figures and never get them done. It's kind of funny within the span of about three months, I've gained two games because all these games behind me, none of them have figures except for silent death. And I already had a whole bunch of them painted. Mind you, I have a whole bunch more. But I just hate painting because it takes me away from gaming. Um, not that I get to do as much of it as I like nowadays, but the thing is, it just it feels like I'm never going forward. I have more figures to paint, right? I was about to take all my Silent Death ships and just send them to Sri Lanka, get them done by Fernando, and just say I'm deck with and be done with it, uh, you know. Um, but the thing is, with Blitz Bowl, it, it just seems funny that within the span of three months, I got Car Wars and Blitz Bowl down my gullet, and now I'm like. I, I give up. I surrender. I have to do this thing, you know. Uh, and good thing is, Blitz Bowl uh, teams are only twenty bucks. Twenty bucks for a team. It's a lot different than paying maybe forty to fifty bucks for a whole complete Blood Bowl team. Now, mind you, there's that caveat with my rule set uh, for leagues saying that you have to get three extra linemen. Um, so, what do I do about that? I don't know. Uh, mind you, uh, with the Blitz Bowl game again, that this just came to my mind right now as I'm speaking to you. You know, could I have two catchers on the field at any one time? With uh, the way the rules are right now, no, you can only have the one. And soon, that's all, the only one you get. So maybe a, another league play idea there. So maybe I would have to get two sets to play my version of league play. But if I love Blitz Bowl enough, maybe I'd do it. Because quite honestly, I really love the idea of a 45-minute football game uh, that you can play quickly in leagues, get more than one game done a night. And as long as it gives you the similitude of football or Blood Bowl, that's close enough for me. That's the video for Blitz Bowl, and I'll see you next time.